just a quick reminder of some of the conventions that we were using. There's something called unadjusted basis, capital B, salvage value S, the N, the recovery period, which is the, again, not directly related to the actual service life of the asset, but essentially how much is permitted under the law for calculating the depreciation amount. At any point of time T, you put this book value and this is the representation. And the depreciation that you have accumulated or at least been charged in that particular year is denoted by capital DT. And the small DT is a fraction of unadjusted basis or something which the, that definition keeps on changing. And we were looking at some of the formulas, right? So the first one that we looked at was this linear model where there is a unadjusted basis and the salvage value you distributed equally and therefore a linear trend can be obtained, right? Sum of years method, it was quite popular in the previous uh, tax regime in bit of old method, but still at least uh, is available in the understanding of the literature. Again, B minus S is the total amount that you distribute. The fraction that you have to calculate is upon n into n plus 1 by 2 which is the sum of your digits on the bottom on the denominator on the numerator this plus 1 comes because we are dealing with a convention change typically the book value is represented as at the end of the time period t because that's our convention but this method forces you to do analysis on uh, beginning of period convention and therefore this term of n minus t plus 1 okay clear here till till this part clear then I was going to explain to you something called a declining balance method, right? So in declining balance, I had given you a, or some idea that amount to be depreciated in a particular year is given by some fixed fraction, so let's say x multiplied by the instantaneous book value. So instead of distributing the net, which is the b minus s, you are always distributing the instantaneous book value, right? So what do I mean is, suppose I say that this X is 10% or 0.1. So in the first year, the depreciation, suppose my original value was 100. So first year depreciation would be what? 10. So book value at the end of year one would be 90. For the second year, now the depreciation will be on this 90. So the depreciation amount in that case would again become 9. So this value will come out to be 81. Then you will reduce per again 8.1 and so on and so forth. And you do this calculation for whatever the number of periods for which you have been allowed to depreciate the asset. Right? Is this clear? Concept wise is clear. So now there are two methods here. One is called declining balance, which is the DB. And another is called double declining balance method. In DB, this fraction X that I just talked about is given by 1 by N. N is the total number of periods that you have to take for depreciation or the life. That 1 by N is given you the fraction as declining balance. So in this particular method, all you need to define is the initial B value, the unadjusted basis and the number of periods and you will be able to calculate the entire thing because you know the formula. There is a slight variation of this, which is called double declining balance. All it happens is that this fraction X is twice compared to the declining balance, therefore the double declining balance. And in this case, the formula is two by N. Is it making sense? Two by N and therefore double decline. So you can easily imagine which one of the two will give you a faster depreciation in the beginning. Double declining balance will give you a faster depreciation in the beginning. And this one is, I think, at least in Indian law, by default, this is the method that you use, uh, Indian taxation law. Of course, diff different type of assets can have a very unique strategy. In US, they use a much more complex formula nowadays. But double declining balance method is quite the basis for all these new methods that are coming. We are not going to deal with them, but essentially, this is the principle, right? So. At any point of time, if you want to calculate the decline, the depreciation amount, you have to multiply by the whatever the rate and the instantaneous value, book value at previous year, right? That's how the formula comes. In case it is a double declining balance, this D becomes 2 by N. 
in case of normal declining balance, this becomes 1 by n. Clear? All right. Any questions in this? Yeah, so same logic as we saw yesterday. So, compared to compared to straight line method, this method is better, right? Because the present worth of your analysis will become higher in this case because you are allowing the much larger tax benefit early in the asset stage. So, as a business, you get better because the bet earlier you realize the benefits in the cash flow series, it's better for you. So, compared to declining balance, double declining will have an even faster depreciation. So, its net present worth for the business would be even better. So, that's the kind of method being used. You could argue why not triple balance, triple declining balance or quadruple. Maybe then it's becoming more or less like such kind of a thing curve, which perhaps is not suitable for calculations. So, yeah, I don't know the logic of only two or why not go even higher. But that's the general formula that you use. Yes, so you have brought down an important point. What is the salvage value in this case? Are we using salvage value in calculation? We are not using salvage value in calculation at all. So, it, the double declining balance or declining balance calculation is only dependent upon your initial amount and the number of periods and you are able to determine. So, in this case, you have to estimate a salvage value. So, suppose you are allowed to depreciate the asset only for in whatever 10 years. So, you will you can easily plot that curve. So, at the end of n years, this is your estimated salvage value compared to like estimated salvage value by this method. Now, you can estimate whether this salvage value is what you originally anticipated or not. If you are higher, if this estimated salvage value is still higher than the original actual salvage value that you had estimated, you are further allowed to change the method of usage. We will look at that. So that finally, your decision, you actually what you do is you combine multiple methods in such a way that ultimately you reach to the salvage value, which is estimated for you. But by default in this method, you are, you can only estimate at any point of time n but whether it is actual or not is something that you need to always be aware of. In any case, you will never be allowed to depreciate beyond the salvage value that you had originally estimated. So, what happens is, let me set the foundation. We will look this, look at this concept later. Suppose you have to do the calculation. This, this point is your actual salvage value that the tax, the government allows you to depreciate. You are starting with double declining balance method. The calculation happens such that till here it's fine, but in nth year you reach a value below the original estimated salvage value. Then you will not be allowed to use this estimated value. You need to switch the method so that your final salvage value of the combined new method still reaches this point which you had originally determined. Same goes here. If it was suppose slightly higher, then also ultimately you should change the method such way that you will result converge into this particular point. How will you do that? We will look into that example also as well. So, real calculation is there is a switching problem. It is a defined switching problem. In between, you are allowed to switch the method. But declining balance and double declining balance in the beginning, the principle remains the same. In the beginning, the higher amount of depreciation leads to overall total benefits for the business and therefore, higher depreciation in the beginning is useful. Okay, right. So, any other doubts right now? We will come back to this point. And then finally, this sinking fund method, which I think you were asking at the last time that uh, can there be a method which is slightly above the linear method? This precisely is the sinking fund method. The calculation remains very simple. Let me explain you. Idea is that you at every year, you keep a fixed amount A separated so that and this value of A can be estimated such that at the end of the period for the asset, you will be able to replace the asset. Right? So, how will you calculate? Suppose you know at the end of year n, the amount that you require to purchase the asset is f. 
right? You could also have a salvage value by that you will get by selling the previous asset. So this F minus S is the total amount you need at the end of year N in order to buy the asset back, right? So how much should be the A value at a given MARR or whatever I, how much should be the A value so that your final amount at the end of year N becomes the F minus S. That is a simple formula. We have been doing this calculation pretty much. So this A you can calculate using this A by F formula. This is this becomes the ratio and this F here is the, the actual value of the asset minus the salvage value that you will get by selling the previous asset that you have. Okay, with me, in this particular case, the actual depreciation charge, A is the amount that you as a company are keeping aside, but the actual asset is depreciating slightly faster, which is not only the A amount plus the A, the interest that A generates. Asset is actually depreciating that much, then only you will finally reach to the F minus S value. As a company, you are supposed to keep A, but you are also keeping the A's interest accumulated, right? Technically, you are also leaving that. Only then, if you are not allowing the A value to get or accumulate interest, you will never be able to reach the F minus S at the end of year end, right? So the actual depreciation is not just A related series, but also the I component of whatever the A series accumulates. Make sense? You are keeping A. But the total asset that it requires is the A and the interest that series that accumulates over the years, right? Make sense? We'll do the calculation. All these values, F is the initial cost minus the salvage value, N is the use for life, I is the annual interest rate and whatever, the simple formulas that we have kept. This particular abbreviation, I have no idea what to call this, but there is a some sort of a sinking fund then there is something called depreciation and this I have to figure out what exactly this is, but I am not interested into teaching the full long abbreviation of this. Okay. All right. You got the concept with me? Let's look at an example. All right. So consider an asset with initial and salvage value. 9 lakhs is the initial value. Salvage value is 70,000 rupees. Okay. And a service life of 3 years. Only 3 years. No, this should not be three. This is five. I'll change uh, in the book also or in the slides also. So you need to plot the book values of assets over time using this different different depreciation formulas. One is the linear depreciation. Second is the sum of digits. Third is the double declining. And fourth is the sinking fund. Annual interest rate is given to you with 10%. Okay, problem is clear. Let's start with the linear one. So the total in linear, the depreciation amount in any given year is fixed, right? The total you need to set to you need to leverage is what? B is what? 9 lakhs. S is your 70,000. DT, which will be equally divided. T is 5. So this is the total amount of depreciation in each year for linear method, right? This is coming out to be 166. Now, at the end of year one, the book value is not, not the end of year one, essentially it's to start from zero. No, so book value at the previous period you are essentially plotting. So this is 900, your DT, which is the small fraction is one by five, five. The actual depreciation amount in that case is 116. So book value at the end of year one becomes 900 minus 100, 166, that is 734, right? Year 2, you take this value here, 734, again 166 depreciation, the value becomes 734 minus 166, 568, right? That becomes the book value, beginning of year 3, 568, 166 is a depreciation amount, 402, that 402 carries forward, 236 carries forward, finally you reach to the salvage value that you had originally anticipated. Make sense? This calculation is easy. Anyone having doubts here? 
all right so sum of year let's calculate in sum of year the actual depreciation amount in each year will be slightly different how do you calculate this formula n minus t plus 1 upon n into n plus 1 by 2 total you need to distribute is still the unadjusted basis and the salvage value right so d1 at the end of year 1 this function this function comes out to be n minus 1 plus 1 upon n into n plus 1 by 2 n is 5 so this is 5 by 15 right the total you need to adjust in that year is 900 minus 70 which is what this value you can calculate i think it is coming out to be 277 similarly d2 would be n minus 2 plus 1 upon 15 which is what 4 by 15 similarly 3 by 15 2 by 15 and 1 by 15 all these fractions will come okay so let's look at the example again here so once you have calculated these fractions 5 by 15 4 by 15 3 by 15 2 by 15 the cal rest of the calculation is pretty simple you start with 900 the first year depreciation is 277 the book value at the end of year 1 is 4, 623 this carries forward 4 by 15 221 is the depreciation in that year the book value at the end of year 2 is 402 carries forward 3 by 15 166 236 book value is 236 111 because it's 2 by 15 fraction of the remaining now uh, no the fraction is uh, it's always you are dividing this 900 minus 70 you are not worried about the instantaneous value this comes out to be 125 you take it 1 by 15 off this 900 minus 70 how much is this hmm? 55.83 okay so i basically rounded off all these tables slightly decimals will be there but finally you reach to the salvage value right clear linear is okay and the sum of years method is okay all right let's look at the double declining balance method so in any double declining balance we are not worried about the f minus s we are only worried about the instantaneous book value the fraction is 2 by n which is 2 by 5 which is 0.4 right start 900 first year how much depreciation 900 multiplied by 0 0.4 360 the net remaining is what 900 multiplied by 0 0.6 which is 540 great now in year 2 what is the depreciation 540 multiplied by 0.4 this value is coming out to be 216 so the book value at the end of year 2 is what 324 now year 3 324 multiplied by 0.44 again i am omitting the fractions to keep the calculation slightly simple there are decimal in each of them so be mindful this is coming out to be 130 so the remaining is 194 4 year 4 194 into 0.4 this value comes out to be 78 the remaining is 116 and then finally 116 divided by 0.4 so this is somewhere 46 so you are remaining with 70 again this 70 here matches your salvage value but it is purely by luck this was not the intention in this particular example only matches because the calculation finally allowed you to do so but you never started with s as a consideration in while starting the calculation okay the moment you change these values slightly it will never match 70 and therefore you will need to switch what kind of method you are you allowed to use because finally your asset 
should be allowed to depreciate only till its salvage value. So if your estimated salvage value compared to this method is slightly higher, then you are allowed to depreciate till the S value. If it is coming out to be slightly lower, then also you cannot charge much. The government does not allow you to charge much. Tax benefit will be exactly to the point where you finally should meet the salvage value that has been prescribed by the law. Salvage value calculation. Also, you would expect that typically government would give you some market price estimations, but typically they don't do that. They would give you, for example, I am allowing you 10% of the fine initial value as a salvage value. They, they, they might describe this kind of thing. Or you do this study of estimating what is the current price of this particular asset at this point of time. You do keep on revising those numbers. That is a quite an intensive job. So essentially, they typically give you that, okay, this complete asset, 80% of this asset you can sell, you can allow to depreciate. So the remaining 22, 20% will be still the salvage value. Below the salvage value, you are not allowed to depreciate. Okay. Salvage value can also be zero in certain cases. Again, uh, I think I'm not, I have not actually read it, but that's what my right now understanding is that uh, this all things are defined in the tax laws. Which kind, which class of assets will be allowed to depreciate with which formula, as well as what is the salvage value that is to be considered. All these things are typically defined. It's a machinery, equipment, land, and things like that. And therefore, you can allow those formulas to do the calculation. If you have a CA friend, ask them. Not the CAs who put your income tax returns, but one who work for corporate. Most of them are uh, trained in this. Corporate finance is part of their training, so they would know. But you can get more details. With me so far? Okay. So, let just wanted to uh, clarify this particular point. So important to note in the same point, the salvage value is not utilized while you are calculating using declining balance method and double declining balance method. In the previous example, the book value reaches the salvage value and that is purely coincidental. It was not by design of the formula. It is purely coincidental. At any point of time t, the implied salvage value using this db and ddp formula you can calculate using this at each time it's if it is a db it's d is 1 by n otherwise 2 by n this is the series that is being populated and by this but at, at the end of year n you can estimate how much is the salvage value currently if it matches it matches if it doesn't we need to do something different which we will cover now okay so if the implied salvage value of an asset is less than the estimated salvage value, further depreciation cannot be charged and the company will have to pay taxes according to the estimate salvage value and not the implied one. In any case, you will you have to finally reach the same salvage value. That's the concept. Okay. How will you do that? We will look into some example. But before that, let me give you that sinking fund method where we were calculating this A series and how the book values and everything will look in that series, right? We have also looked at the example. Please pay attention to this note. This is slightly big language, but at least when you refer to the slides later, it will clarify how the calculation is done. So what is the purpose of this method? In this method, it is assumed that the funds required to replace the asset accumulates in a sinking fund. It's the name of a fund where you are getting I% percent interest rate and you are giving A amount every year, right? That's, it's called sinking fund. The total fund accumulated in sinking fund plus interest on it up to any given time is assumed to be equal to the total depreciation cost of that time. So sinking fund, because you have given money, that A money to a sinking fund, in that it is accumulating some interest rate. So your calculation of A is considering that I also. That's how you determine the A because that's the formula we have used. So this A and the component of interest accumulated by whatever amount was deposited in sinking fund is the actual depreciation, not the A value directly, right? With this method, a uniform yearly deposit can easily be calculated if you have, if you know the I value and if you know how much is the sinking fund can generate the interest rate for you. And of course, for a given salvage value, 
the depreciation cost for any year is subsequently obtained by adding the annual deposits and the accumulated interest for that year okay i've given you this don't memorize but this logically it makes sense it's not the only a value as a company but the actual depreciation is the a plus the interest that a amount had generated till the time you have deposited or whatever time you are that's the depreciation concept how to do this calculation so suppose in our previous example your final f has to be 900 minus 70 because 70 is your salvage value 900 9 lakhs is or whatever you are originally unadjusted basis so 830 i is 10 percent n is 5 so you can calculate this a amount using this formula what is that coming out to be can anyone give me the calculation 135 point so 136 i have kept it as a uniform number right so let's calculate in the year one the initial book value is 900 the a amount in that is 136 this 136 you have just deposited so it has not accumulated any interest so the interest that a accumulates in period one is zero so the total depreciation is this column plus this column right that remains 136 so the book value at the end of year one becomes 900 minus 136 which is 764 okay year two the a value remains 136 but this 136 deposited one year ago has now gathered 13.6 as an interest rate 10 percent right so the total depreciation amount in this case becomes 149.6 which is the sum of 136 plus 13.6 clear so the book value at the end of year 2 becomes 614.4 now a value remains same the total essentially this was the amount that was in the account right previous year and that has been deposited for another year so at 10 percent it will accumulate another 14.9 yeah instead of yeah so let me give you instead of this follow the logic from the column here so that it becomes uniform for you to estimate the formula right here this is 149.6 so 14.9 is the total interest that this a series of two period uh, that you have accumulated and the interest this is 14.9 so the total in this case is 136 plus 14.9 164.45 the book value becomes 449.8 a remains same 16.5 again 10 percent of for a year 181 268 a remains same 18.1 total becomes 119.1 final value comes out to be 70 is it making sense bit tough two years it passed by people then let, told me that they were not able to understand these slides ever so i've modified the slides a little bit to make the calculation more apparent and added this note for you what we are doing is the a value plus the interest that whatever has been accumulated in sinking fund whatever that amount is you add and that's the depreciation in that particular year and once you know the depreciation once you know the original book value you can always calculate the book value at any point of time t making sense all right so here i have just plotted all the book values that we have estimated using different different formulas as the time passes by so you can see this black line is your straight line the red line is your sum of years your pink line is the sinking fund method the a related calculation that we have done and the blue line is the ddb from maximizing the present worth which is favorable ddb yeah so essentially the more steep this particular curve is the better it is for you so you can easily see how this sinking fund method is really not used in the real world because it does not allow the straight line method performs better 
we are not even wanting to do the straight line. So it's, in the real world, it's never used, almost never used. But the concept is same, right? With me, if you could hypothetically come up with something here, then that would become your more preferable mod, mode of depreciating the assets. More developed countries are actually going towards this. They come up with more enhanced formulas so that you can change the slope of this curve like that. But you don't want to ultimately make a curve like this. That's also not desirable. So essentially, you are trying to smoothing the curve with some logical formulas. 2 by n, 3 by n, 4 by n, 5 by n, whatever you can do. But essentially, this will fall into this category. Okay. Any questions so far? Everyone clear? Tax receiver. Yes, it will be. But the government is not greedy. Because ultimately, if you are, the main purpose of this is that there should be continuity. If you start charging on this, there is a high chance that people will actually not deposit this money. And therefore, they might actually get, go bankrupt in a two years, three years period of time. So government does not want that. They actually want you to keep investing in your same assets. Otherwise, your companies will go bankrupt. You will not be able to sustain your businesses. Right. So that's the main idea. So they allow, okay, we get a little bit tech, less tax from you. But at least your business continuity is we are trying to guarantee. And that's more important for the government. Right. Any other question? All right. So there's another method. This is uh, again not at all used, but sometimes you could find it easy, especially when you are doing with a project level calculation and try to keep it a simple calculation. What happens is, for example, in particularly in construction, you always have equipments which are not only used for a single project. For example, you could have a tower crane. As a company, you could have a tower crane. But then the tower crane will be only, let's say, used for two months in a particular project. And then it will be dismantled and sent to somewhere. That's the asset of the company which it uses for different, different projects. So how do you build such kind of equipments into a specific project becomes a slightly more challenging because you cannot keep on depreciating in on the first project. Suppose you bought the tower crane today and the first project that it did was just one crore project. And if you are allowing to depreciate in that one crore project, it is heavily influencing the cash flow on that particular project. Versus if the right at the beginning, you are allowing it to depreciate in 10 crore project, then that cash flow is not as affected. So it's not fair that you use the same formula for a for an asset which is used across different projects. So a simplified formula in certain cases is how much utilization of that machine happens in a specific project. Suppose a machine can generate in its entire life, it can generate X quantity. So if your current project only uses 20% of that quantity, then the depreciation should also be corresponding to that 20% of the total depreciation for that asset. That's the concept so that your individual projects do not get too much influenced by depreciating such heavy machinery or heavy equipment. So in construction, it is typically used, but from a corporate perspective, it's never used, right? But for projects, sometimes you use this simple definition, especially for these highly specialized equipment. So what happens is, suppose the total amount that you need to depreciate is B minus S, which is the, the unadjusted basis and the salvage value. The total lifetime usage, usage can be defined in terms of quantity of work, let's say. Right, uh, one machine will be useful for 10,000 cubic meter. One pump, one concrete pump that you are creating will be useful for 10,000 cubic meter of concrete in its entire life. So if a particular project has 5,000 cubic meter of pump, uh, concrete pumping required, that 5,000 divided by the total, you will distribute on this particular project. Okay, make sense? So actual uses for ERT and the total lifetime usage divide multiplied by B minus S. Let's look at a particular example. Suppose there's an excavator with initial cost of 20 lakhs and its useful life is 50,000 meter cube of earthwork. That's only its useful life. The salvage value at the end is estimated to be 2 lakhs. What are the yearly depreciation expenses of this equipment in a project if the construction schedule calls for 8,000 meter cube of excavation as follows? So you have an excavator, which is of course a machine which is going to be used for multiple projects. In this particular project, the only requirement is 8,000 cubic meter. 
but the in its entire life the excavator can do 50000 cubic meter of earthwork and here it's given in year 1 2 3 4 the kind of uses of that particular excavator is 3000 cubic meter 2000 cubic meter 100800 and 1200 cubic meter of earthwork in respective years so what will be depreciation in those simple the total depreciation allowed is what 20 minus 2 Over fifty thousand cubic meters, so this is coming out to be thirty six rupees per cubic meter of earthwork unit charge you have gotten. Now in year one in project this particular project the total requirement is what three thousand cubic meter. So the total depreciation amount will be three thousand multiplied by thirty six. Then two thousand cubic meter multiplied by seventy two thousand eighteen hundred sixty four thousand twelve hundred. Forty-three thousand two hundred. Now, here becomes the challenge. So, at a corporate level, when you are filing taxes, you might still be forced to follow such kind of formula, right? But when you are actually distributing this on the different different projects, your for each project the cash flow series might look very differently. So, ultimately, in any case. even if you are distributing your one asset to multiple projects you cannot allow an asset to go below the salvage value that you have taken ultimately it should reach that so therefore at a corporate level these calculations become slightly tricky but at a project level as a project manager you can still rely on this simple formula it is ultimately that corporate headquarters responsibility that they estimate the sum of all these individual depreciation that they have accumulated in the their individual projects but still maintain that they are never finally going below the salvage value that was allowed as per the original formula so then they have to adjust that in certain projects they might not use this formula of the linear one that we have used not like the unit of production versus in certain other cases they will do so it's a it gets big tricky when you are dealing with very simple concept but that's where you need an chartered accountancy proficiency because then they know how these adjustments are allowed across different projects what are the formulas applicable how to make the sure that accounting is transparent and properly understood by everyone right otherwise there's a lot of opportunity that people can mistake about how the transactions are happening across different projects okay making sense all right let me introduce you to the final concept in this particular case so as i was telling you in the double declining balance method we had calculated a salvage value and in our previous case this one coincidentally was at the same as the estimated original estimated salvage value but let's slightly change the question suppose you have initial value of 1000 year the service life of it remains 5 years instead of the 900 in the previous question now i am giving it to be 1000 if you do the calculations now you will see at the end of year 5 using this double declining balance method your salvage value is to be coming out to be 77.8 which is the estimated using ddb method but your actual salvage value is 70 so you are not completely leveraging your asset right you are still you could have gotten the benefit of that 7.8 lakhs which you have not gotten the tax benefits on that 7.8 lakhs which you have not gotten so you need to do something or if it would have been like 60 point something or let's say so then you are taking additional advantage of tax benefits for this so then you need to again change the method okay so how to do that this is a classic problems which a lot of people actually on a day to day basis you need to do that this is called switching between the depreciation methods so you are not using a single depreciation method throughout its service life but essentially during its service life you make a decision that okay now so far i have been using this method but from here now onwards i will have to use this particular method how to do that is i am going to show the most general case we will look at but then of course there could be n number of combinations i'm not going to ask those combinations but essentially this is only one example that we are looking in reality there could be switching between any of the method to any of the method that you are looking for but we are going to cover only the switching between the ddb and the 
straight line method. That's the most common switching and we are going to look only on that. Okay. So, at some point of time in the course of the lifetime of the asset, the method for calculating the depreciation is changed to finally meet the salvage value that you had originally estimated. So, for example, the method is changed from DDP to DD, not DDP, DDB to straight line method, straight line method, as the latter has a relatively higher depreciation during later years of useful life. So, what happens is, this is a classic, sorry, let us look at this example. So, in DDB, what is happening? In the beginning, there is a much more depreciation, but in the final stages, the slope of this individual is lesser than this value, right? So, in the final stage, the linear method provides you higher depreciation compared to the DDB method. In the beginning, the DDB is much more steeper compared to the linear method. So, there makes a sense to finally change it from DDB to linear. That is the main idea. Yeah. So, this is basically done to more rapidly reduce the book value and maximize the present value of total depreciation over the recovery period. The concept remains same. You switch when it makes sense and the making sense idea is that the present worth of your total depreciation over the entire period should be maximized. That is where you get the maximum tax benefit as a company. right? Also, it increases the income tax advantages in years where depreciation is larger by one method than other. And this is allowed. This is not a illegal calculation. This is actually allowed in the proper formulas. This provisions are there that you can finally switch so that ultimately you match the requirements of the law. right? So, switching from DDB not the declining balance and the SL method is the most common. How to do that? So, switching is recommended when depreciation for any year M, let us say any year M in the, of course, the period for any depreciation for period M using the established method, what you are already using till that point is less than that for a new method. In that case, you choose the method which will give you the maximum depreciation. So, at any point of time m, if you are using calculation using current method and you see that slightly higher depreciation is allowed by other method, you switch to that method in order to maximize your present worth of the entire cash flow series. Okay? So, regardless of the method we used, again the book value can never go below the salvage value which is set at the purchasing time. You cannot change it, uh, at, at least in the law, the tax calculation. We are assuming a simple zero salvage value, but it could be something else as well. Okay, we are assuming that S equals to zero in our calculations. The undepreciated amount of book value depreciation calculation at each year happens on the undepreciated amount at that point of time. Okay. So, it is not like a, the straight line calculations also you need to do at every step. It is not a single, you are not always adjusting the original B minus S. If for example, in the beginning you were using a DDP method. So, at this point onwards, if you need to make a decision whether to switch from DDB to straight line, the calculation does, the calculation of straight line does not happen on this original. The calculation of straight line happens on this value and the remaining salvage value. Got the idea? I will show you graphically also how to do that. But essentially, you are using the instantaneous book value. So, this is not the same straight line method that you first learned. In the original straight line method, you were distributing the entire B minus S. But here, you are distributing the instantaneous value B minus the salvage value, which for simplicity, we have kept 0. Okay? Let me show you the example. So, what how, how to do? For each year M, you need to compute two depreciation charges. First is using the DDB method, which is simple. We have already looked at the formula. So, this is instantaneous value multiplied by the small d, which in this case is the 2 by N. At that point of time T, the straight line method depreciation is calculated using this formula. 
bv m minus 1 which is the book value at the previous year which you have to adjust and the number of periods remaining for it to be depreciated which is coming out to be n minus m plus 1 plus 1 because you are shifting from the time convention a little bit right and then you select the method which has the maximum of these two terms that is the depreciation formula you will be selecting. Let me first show you an example, then I will take the questions. Okay. Let us start with a book value of 1000 rupees. The question is simple DDB and straight line method is something that you need to do. Point 1, like the time period 1, the depreciation, of course, the n is given to be 5. So, the small d for DDB is what 2.2 by 5, which is 0.4. So, in this particular case, the depreciation amount is 400. 1000 into 0.4, right? At this point, straight line method will be what? 1000 divided by n minus m plus 1, m is 1. So, 1000 divided by 5, which is 200. Make sense? So, n minus m plus 1, depreciation using straight line method. The depreciation amount is 200. You choose the maximum of the two. So, you choose the 400 rupees. So, you are basically still on the DDB method. So, in that year, you allow using the DDB method. So, your book value becomes 1000 minus the depreciation amount, which is 400 becomes 600. Year 2, 600 into 0.4, how much? 240, 240, 600 divided by n minus m plus 1, 600 divided by 5 minus 2 plus 1, 600 divided by 4, 150. Making sense? This amount is 150. Which one to choose? 240. So, the maximum of the two is 240. You allow the depreciation for that, the book value remains. 600 minus 240 is equal to 360. Just give me a minute, I will finish it off. Then, year 3, 360 into, this is coming out to be 144. And straight line method, 360 divided by, by, by 3, is coming out to be 120. Out of these two, which is better? Still DDB. So, you allow 144 of depreciation. The final value becomes 216, which is 360 minus 144. Year 4. Year 4 calculation. What is the using DDB? What is the depreciation amount? 216 divided multiplied by 0.4. What is this? 86.4. Straight line method. 216 divided by 2 or 3? n minus m plus 1. m is 4. 216 by 2. 108. Which one to choose now? Straight line method. So, this is where the shifting has happened. 108. Out of 216, you select 108. Then the remaining 108 into 0.4, what is the value? 43. 43, not 51.8. This value is wrong according to you. Could be. I do not take guarantee for this. But <laughs> tell me the what is the correct value? I could have subtracted maybe. I am not sure. No, I did not subtract. But yeah, you got the value correct. For linear, it will be what? Divided by 1. So, that total amount is 108. 108. Salvage value at the end of year 5 becomes 0. Got it? The only difference here in the straight line calculation is that you are not distributing the original B minus S, but the instantaneous B minus S. S is 0. So, you are dividing the instantaneous B minus S. So, switching happens at year 4.
final value, you are still able to reach salvage value. If you would have done the calculation, you will not be meeting the salvage value only using DDB. So, if you plot this thing, let me just give you some sort of a plot. We can have more questions on this tomorrow, but essentially the curve will look like something and then this is the straight line portion. That is how the curve will look like. This will give you the maximum net present worth of your total series of the tax benefit series, this kind of a calculation. Okay.